By the way, with this whole story with the Kursk region, the Russian mass media completely forgot that the F-16s are in Ukraine. Even at the beginning of this week, while Russian propaganda tried to explain why these planes would not affect anything in Ukraine, Douglas Barry, an expert on air power at the International Institute for Strategic Studies, in an interview with The Economist, thinks the main immediate value of Ukrainian F-16s is a boost to morale, or shall we say to Russian dismorale, despite the fact the initial numbers are small and the Ukrainians will use them cautiously to avoid losses that will give Russia a propaganda victory. But they should start to make an incremental difference, the expert says. According to reports, America is equipping the F-16s with advanced air-to-air -air missiles, such as the long-range version of the AIM-120 and the AIM-9X, the newest version of the Sidewinder, as well as high-speed and anti-radiation missiles. They will be able to carry up to four GBU-39 glide bombs, which, while smaller than their Russian equivalents, are far more accurate and long-range. They can also carry cluster munitions to be used against troops in armoured formations. Upgraded radars are reportedly on the way. The F-16s could lessen the impunity on which Russian Su-34s have been pummeling Ukrainians' front lines. The Russians have been launching more than 100 crude but effective glide bombs every day without having to leave Russian airspace even. As experts say, the priority will be to force Russian pilots to stay further back or risk being shut down. The AIM-120D is an all-weather missile with its own active radar that is thought to have a range of up to 180 kilometers, though when the target takes evasive action, the missile must twist and turn, reducing, of course, its range. The F-16s can use cheaper heat-seeking AIMS 9X missile to take down the cruise missiles that have been crippling Ukraine's civilian infrastructure. Their 20mm 6-barrel Gatling gun should be quite effective against slow-moving Shahid drones. F-16s could also fire Halpoon anti-ship missiles against the remainder of Russia's Black Sea fleet. But with numbers building up slowly, it may take some time before the F-16s can have actual much impacts. A recent report by the Center of Strategic and International Studies, CSIS, another think tank, argues that Ukraine needs many more aircraft than have so far been promised. Of then 79 committed, at least 10 are two-seat trainers. Some of the others may be in such poor condition that to serve mainly as a source of spare parts. Ukraine may have enough for just three to four squadrons. The report argues that it needs 12 squadrons or more with 18 planes per squadron to achieve local air superiority and support a ground offensive. It will take time, of course, to integrate the F-16s with Ukraine's air defense systems and to acquire operating experience. Still, the F-16's arrival marks the start of building a NATO standard air force no less. It plugs Ukraine into, and very intimately, if you ask me, the F-16's well-developed supply chain. NATO weapon systems such as Storm Shadow, Scalp Missile will be far more effective when carried by planes that were designed for, rather than lashed onto elderly MiGs and Suhoys. Ukraine's F-16s also come equipped with Link-16, a NATO tactical data link that allows secure communications and improved situational awareness. Too few and too late, though they may be, the F-16's importance should not be underestimated.